things. One thing we didn't get to yet is to talk about the water oil ratio. Now the water oil ratio WOR, so water oil ratio, is the ratio of water produced to the oil produced. Okay. And, and that will change with time. So early on, that number will be very small. It might even be zero and, uh, if you're at irreducible water saturation. And as time goes on, it will increase. It could go all the way to infinity, right? So if you're not producing any oil, then your denominator becomes approaches zero, and then the water oil ratio could be infinity. So going away from zero to infinity. Water oil ratio is not the same thing as the water cut, which is I just mentioned for your project, but it is related. The water cut is the percent of water produced. So it's really more like water produced divided by oil produced plus water produced. So they are related, but they're not the same thing. What we want is to be able to predict the water oil ratio for a well. Why is that important? Well, obviously one thing is important is how much oil we produce with time. And you are, it's, you know, you're going to continue to produce oil even after breakthrough and even well after breakthrough, but that amount will go lower and lower and lower. But as that number goes lower, you're also producing water. And that pr production of water comes at a cost. When you produce that water, you're going to have to treat that water. You're going to have to dispose of that water. So that comes at a cost. So if you're producing 80% water and 10% oil, that would be the water cut, right? The water oil ratio is is the, the ratio of water produced to oil produced. But if you're producing 80% water and 20% oil, there's a good chance you're still making good money because that oil, you know, comes at $50 a barrel, $70 a barrel, depending on uh, the day of the week. And, uh, but in the water has a cost, but it's probably um, not particularly high, or it's at least in comparison to the oil produced. But if you start getting to 95% water, water cut or 99% water cut, then it might not be economically worth it. So you need to know what your water oil ratio is in addition to how much oil you're producing. And uh, if we look at a five spot pattern, right, we have an injector over here, we have a producer over here, then uh, remember what we talked about with aerial sweep efficiency is that time goes on, you have a swept region which changes. So this is a swept region and the outer part is unswept. Okay, So the water hasn't contacted the unswept region and so you're not going to produce any oil from there. Even in the swept region, some oil is going to be left behind. That's chapter 13 stuff, displacement efficiency. This is kind of a snapshot at a certain time or a certain amount of water injected. But if we wanted to see what would happen if we injected a little bit more water, what would happen? Well, if you inject an incremental amount of water, I'm going to call that DWI, right? So it's an incremental amount of water. Um, if, it, if it helps, you can think of it as being one barrel of water, which isn't very much then injecting that incremental amount of water is going to have an effect in the swept region, but it's also going to expand your swept region. And I'm going to call this expanded region the newly swept region. And maybe I'll call this the original swept region, right? So if I inject a little bit more water, it's going to expand that region an incremental amount. Okay, and what happens over the producer well, over here, I'm going to produce some water. I'm going to produce some oil in the original swept region, which I'm going to call DNPS. And I am going to, D, oh, D, I'm going to put a capital there, so DN, and we use N for oil. 
and then DNPU, which is the oil in the newly swept region. Okay. So if I inject one barrel of water, maybe I produce a half a barrel of water. I produce maybe 0.4 barrels of oil from the previously swept region and 0.1 barrels of oil from the newly swept region. Those are just numbers I'm making up, of course. But because we're assuming everything's at steady state and we've got constant pressure and things are incompressible, we, for every barrel of water we inject, a barrel of something has to come out. And that something that comes out could be water, it could be oil in the originally swept region, or it could be oil in the newly swept region. Therefore, I'm going to define WOR as DWP divided by DNPS plus DNPU. Okay. Why? Because water oil ratio is the ratio of water produced. DWP is the incremental water produced, and divided by the oil produced. And there's two kinds of oil produced. Oil in the swept region that was originally swept, and now oil that's in the newly swept region. This isn't a particularly useful formula. It doesn't help us predict anything. So we're going to have to do quite a bit of, of math and algebra here to come up with a formula that's useful for calculating the water oil ratio. We should all point out that the fractional flow of water at the producer well along one of the existing streamlines is DWP divided by DNPS plus DWP. So it's the water produced divided by the water produced plus the, only the oil produced in the originally swept region. Likewise, FOP, which is really 1 minus FWP, you could write as D of the oil produced, right? This is the fractional flow of oil divided by DNPS divided by DWP. So they have the same denominator. Okay. And um, therefore, if I want to write this in terms of DWP, I can say DWP is equal to FWP times DNPS plus DWP. Likewise, I can say that DNPS is equal to FOP times DNPS plus DWP. These come from just rearranging that. Okay. Now what can I do with that? Well, what I can do with this is I've got DWP and DNPS, so I can plug them directly into the water oil ratio formula. So by doing that, I can now say that WOR equal to FWP okay so we just substituted DWP is equal to this, and we've substituted DNPS is equal to this, and now we're left with this formula for W for water oil ratio. Still not really anywhere close to being useful, uh, but we're we're moving in the right direction. And we've got this term over here, which is DNPS. So this is the oil swept in the previously swept region. And this is the DWP, which is the water produced. And so what I really want is if I go back up to this formula over here, that is this term over here. So I can say that that term is DWI minus 
DNPU. So, since DNPS plus DWP, which is this right there, is equal to DWI minus DNPU, I can substitute this in for that there, and I can also substitute it for up there as well. Yeah, so I'll put that up. And All right, so this term in parentheses in the numerator and this term in parentheses in the denominator, I can substitute as DWI minus DNPU because of our original mass balance, which was the, the incremental water injected results in some incremental water produced plus some incremental oil produced from the swept region plus some incremental oil produced from the newly swept region. So if I take this and plug it into the water oil ratio formula, what I get the water oil ratio is now I'm gonna instead of saying FWP I'm gonna just say 1 minus FOP so this is the fractional flow of oil at the producer well times DWI minus DNPU or FOP DWI minus DNPU plus DNPU. Okay, and I'm going to multiply that. Okay, so this is, this is what I get by making that substitution. If I multiply by DWI divided by DWI, well, that's just by multiplying by 1. So I can do that, right? I can, that doesn't change anything. But there's a reason for me to doing that is that I can divide through these terms by DWI and I can get a derivative. I can divide these by the, new, the, the DWI on top and I can get a derivative. And when I do that, I get 1 minus FOP times 1, DWI divided by DWI is 1, minus DNPU divided by DWI. Divided by FOP times 1 minus DNPU divided by DWI plus DNPU divided by DWI. This is the formula we're going to use. This is how we're going to calculate the water oil ratio. Now notice something that if I'm 100% swept, if I if I if my aerial sweep efficiency is 100%, then there there isn't any incremental oil in, in an unswept zone, right? Because we're already at 100%. So you don't sweep any more with, with more. So what that would mean is that all those terms go to zero and we're just left with one minus FOP over FOP. And that's a really simple formula for water oil ratio, but it only applies after you're at 100% aerial sweep efficiency. If you're before 100% aerial sweep efficiency, we need to know what DNPU DWI is. So, where DNPU divided by DWI, I'm going to use the chain rule. So the chain rule says that that's DNPU DEA. So it's a how much incremental oil do I produce in the unswept zone? by increasing the aerial sweep efficiency by some incremental amount times DEA divided by DWI. What is that term? How much does the aerial sweep efficiency change with 
an incremental amount of water injected. This is the chain rule, right? This cancels with that, and you're just left with that. Okay, so, well, we, we need these two terms now. We, if you go back a few slides in our, in our PowerPoint slides or, or calculations last week, you might remember that incremental oil produced in this unswept zone is going to be equal to SWF, that's the water saturation at the front, minus SWA times the pore volume times DEA. So all this says is that your incremental aerial sweep efficiency multiplied by the pore volume multiplied by the change in saturation from the initial saturation to the saturation at the front is the incremental amount of oil we produce in that newly swept region. So just a little bit of algebra, DNPU, DEA is equal to SWF minus SWI VP times Let me see, so you get that. Okay, so this goes into here. You need to know what the pore volume is. You might recall that WI at breakthrough, so this is the water injected at breakthrough, is equal to the pore volume times the aerial sweep efficiency at breakthrough, times the average saturation behind the front, minus the initial water saturation. That was a formula we derived last week. Solve for the pore volume. Pore volume is WIBT divided by EABT WF minus SWI. Okay, so I can I've got this now. I needed pore volume. I could substitute that for the pore volume. And that all goes into DNPU DEA. Now I need DEA DWI. Okay. Well, remember from last week that the aerial sweep efficiency is equal to a constant, the aerial sweep efficiency at breakthrough, plus 0.274 times the LN, the water injected, divided by the water injected at breakthrough. This was a correlation that has been found through experiments. So if I want to no, DEA with respect to DWI, DEA divided by DWI. This is not too bad of a derivative. That's a constant, so it goes away. I get my 0.274, and then I got 1 over WI or WIBT times the derivative of the inside, which is 1 over WIBT, and all you're left with is 0.274 over DWI. Okay, so let's let's put it all together. This was our equation for water oil ratio. We needed DNPU DWI, which is the change, the incremental oil produced in the unswept region for every incremental amount of water you produced. Expect that number to be less than one, right? Like if you put in one barrel of water, you're not gonna produce more than a barrel of oil when things are incompressible. We need a DNPU DWI, which was this chain rule. We derived an equation for DNPU DEA which is this, and, and we can substitute VP, the pore volume, in. And then we have an equation for DEA DWI, 
which is this. So we could just combine, we can just put in these three equations, this one, this one, and this one, all end over here, and now I get my final answer, which is DNPU DWI is 0.274 EABT times WIBT over WI times SWF minus SWI Okay, you can calculate everything in here, right? So presuming you know your fluid properties and reservoir properties, we had an equation to compute the aerial sweep efficiency at breakthrough. There was a correlation there. It was dependent on the mobility ratio. There's actually a plot, which might be easier to use. We had an equation to calculate the water injected at breakthrough. So you can calculate it. WI is, of course, how much water you've injected, and you'll know how much water you've injected. SWF is the water saturation at the front. That, of course, comes from the tangent of our fractional flow curves. SWI is the initial water saturation. And SWF bar is the average saturation behind the front, and we had an equation for it. So now that you have this, you can plug it in directly into here to calculate the water oil ratio. And this is appropriate if the water injected is wa less than the water injected at 100% 100, at 100 sweep efficiency. Else, if WI is greater than 100% sweep efficiency, WOR just reduces to 1 minus FOP divided by FOP. So we had a lot of math to come to this point, but I, I, you know, I don't like to give you equations and just tell you to trust me that, that they're appropriate. We, we walked through all the steps and we came up with this final solution. So this is DNPU DWI, you calculate it, you plug it into your water oil ratio formula and you can calculate that. Remember what we had, it was a, a five spot reservoir, things like the, the area, the thickness, the porosity were given, irreducible water saturation, residual oil saturation, viscosities of the fluids, relative permeability curves were all given. And what we did last time is we calculated the pore volume, that was easy, that was the area times the thickness, and we had to do some conversion factors. We had to calculate the water saturation at the front, so we used our fractional flow curve here, found the tangent and got SWF, and from SWF we calculated the mobility ratio. Remember the mobility ratio of interest was given as this formula here. So, we, and this was at SWF bar, so we needed to calculate SWF bar, which was related to SWF. SWF bar is the sat average saturation behind the front. Remember, SWF is the saturation at the front. This is all the way from X is equal to zero all the way to the front position. It's an average. So we got that, and at that saturation, we were able to calculate relative permeabilities. We already knew the viscosity, so you calculate the numerator. The denominator was calculated at our initial saturation, which was irreducible. So KRW was zero, KRO was the endpoint relative permeability of oil, which was one. The next step was to use some of the equations we calculated. So we got the aerial sweep efficiency at breakthrough, which was about 0.62. Okay, that number made sense. It was less than 100% try to figure out how much water we injected at breakthrough, which was 39,000 barrels. Not surprisingly, that was less than the pore volume. And we calculated a dimensionless time using our formula, which is 0.2738.
Then what we did is we calculated the water injected at 100% sweep efficiency. We used our formula and we got 156,000 barrels. Okay, so at that point, we've completely swept the reservoir, but we've, even in the swept region, we've left oil behind. So again, not a huge surprise that this number is smaller than the pour volume. That's what we would expect. Then we said, how much water have we produced? How much water have we produced at 50% um, of the water injected for breakthrough? Well, prior to breakthrough, prior to any breakthrough, we know that whatever water we inject, we produce. We, we produce that amount of oil. So we've injected 50% of 39,000, which is 19,000 barrels of water. That means we produce 19,000 barrels of, of oil. Now that's only true because the initial water saturation is immobile. It's the irreducible water saturation. And then the other question is what's the water oil ratio? We just learned about water oil ratio. I, I don't need to plug it into a formula. I know what the answer is. I know that water hasn't broken through yet and what initial water was there is immobile. So I haven't produced any water, and the water oil ratio is water produced divided by oil produced. So that number is clearly zero. But we had then done the next part, which is, okay, what about after breakthrough? What if we look at a case that's in between breakthrough and 100% sweep efficiency? So um, the halfway mark. So WI breakthrough plus WI 100 divided by 2. Well, let's calculate how much water that would be. We know that we've injected 39,000 barrels of water at breakthrough. And we know that we've injected 156,000 barrels at 100% sweep efficiency. The halfway point is 98,000 barrels. We use our correlation to calculate the aerial sweep efficiency at that point, which is 0.8725. Again, not surprisingly, we know it's going to be greater than the water injected at breakthrough, and we know it's going to be less than 100%, so 0.87 makes sense. Then we, we got to find this QI star, which is this dimensionless time. And oh, it's this ugly formula that uses the exponential integral and, and all that, and you got to calculate A1 and A2 before that. Let's and what, what the plot was, is it was a plot of QI star divided by QI star breakthrough, and we know QI star breakthrough, versus the water injected divided by the water injected at breakthrough at different breakthrough aerial sweep efficiencies. Okay, and so you use that plot and you can find QI star is about 0.6. And remember, that's a dimensionless time. From that, like we've always done, the derivative of the fractional flow at the producer well is 1 over the dimensionless time. So 1 over 0.6 is 1.661. The saturation of the producer well comes from that derivative of the fractional flow curve, which was given to you. And that value is 0.6308. And at that saturation, you can calculate the fractional flow, which is 0.94. And what that gives you is the average saturation, which is 0.669. And from that, you can calculate the oil recovered from this formula. The oil recovered is the aerial sweep efficiency. We've calculated that to be 0.8725. S put WP bar is 0.669. SWI is given and we calculate the pour volume. That means that we produce 61,000 barrels of oil. Again, good idea to, to ask yourself, does that number make sense? I've injected 98,000 barrels of water at this point. I don't expect to produce 98,000 barrels of oil because this is after breakthrough. And sure enough, I produced a little bit less than that. What I like to say is I don't know if my answer is right, but I know it's not wrong. Had I gotten over 98,000 or something, I'd be really concerned. 
But we also ask for what the water oil ratio is in this problem. And the water oil ratio requires us to get DNPU DWI. Remember, that's just what we did. We need DNPU, DWI, we need to calculate this and then plug it into our water oil ratio formula. And in this example problem, we've already calculated EABT, WIBT, SWF, and SWFR, and, and all that. So you plug all that in, and I get 0.15164. Again, I expect that number to be less than 1. Okay, for every barrel of water I inject, I've got to produce less than one barrel of oil in the in in the um, in the swept zone, right? Water oil ratio requires me to put in DNPU DWI, and I get so I put in the 0.1516. I get a water oil ratio of 3.94. Okay. So there are four barrels of water produced about for every barrel of oil. I mean, uh, for every barrel of oil I, I produce. That's really a water cut of 80%, right? So it's four out of five. So it's about an 80%. That's not too bad. Not too bad. It uh, seems high, but um, probably still making a profit there. So the last example is, is that, well, what about once we've injected water and oil production, you know, so, so um, how much water do I inject and how much oil have I produced once I reach a water oil ratio of 100? So not a water cut of 100%. That's not what that says. It's a water oil ratio. So 100 barrels of water for every barrel of oil that you produced. That's probably a good time to think about um, you know, changing things up. So abandoning the reservoir, drilling new wells, turning in the producer wells and injector wells, enhanced oil recovery, something like that. But you'll have to do the economics on that. That's it's a class that you will take next year. Um, Okay, and so I, I just tell you, I, I assume that that occurs after WI of 100, right? So we don't, we don't know. I, I gave you a hint there, so you can, you can do that. And so the solution is, is that I've got to calculate my water oil ratio. So because, because it's after 100% sweep efficiency, my water oil ratio formula really simplifies. I don't have to worry about that DNPU DWI business. It's just the fractional flow of water to the producer well divided by one minus the fractional flow of water to the producer well. And in the problem statement, I said that the water oil ratio is 100. I do a little bit of algebra. I find that the fractional flow of the producer well is 0.99. I go look at my fractional flow curves. And at that fractional flow, the saturation is 0.689, and the derivative of the fractional flow is 0.3487. Okay, I'm not going to go through that. We, we all know how to use those fractional flow curves now. And then, so the average saturation using my formula is SW plus um, 1 minus... Um, FWP over the derivative, and so you get 0.717, and that means that the oil recovery is 82,000 barrels. All right. And then the water injected, well, let's think about this. How much water have I injected? Well, I've, um, we know we're past 100% sweep efficiency. So it's going to be whatever I had at 100% sweep efficiency, which we previously calculated at 156,000. 
and then it's going to be the pore volume, which is 232,000, which is going to be a change in this dimensionless time. And um, you should think a little bit about that and why that's the case, but it's QI star, we know is 1 over the derivative of fractional flow, so that's 1 over 0.3487. And we know the dimensionless time at 100% sweep efficiency was calculated as 0.8676. So I've injected at this point 621,000 barrels of water but have produced 82,000 barrels of oil. Okay. If you actually make a plot, the blue curve is the oil produced. You have this period where it's a one-to-one -one ratio and then it tapers off. The water-oil ratio looks something like this. Um, this was just if I redid that calculation at a bunch of different times. So this is oil produced versus water injected. Again, early on, there's a, this is not to scale, but early on, for every barrel of water injected, I produce one barrel of oil because the initial water is irreducible water saturation.